To live, each of us needs food, clothing, and shelter. We build our shelters of many different materials, wood, metal, brick, and concrete, just to name a few. Clothing is also made from a number of materials, since cloth can be woven from plant fibers, from animal fibers, and also from various plastics. Food, too, comes from a number of sources. Beef from cattle, and lamb and mutton from sheep. Plants provide us with many other foods, as lettuce, carrots, and other vegetables wheat and other grains, and apples and other fruits. Where do all of the many things we need to live come from? Let's begin with food. In one recent year, each American drank about 35 gallons of milk, ate 170 pounds of meat, 99 pounds of potatoes, and 120 pounds of vegetables. Where do we get all this food? It all comes from the land. We grow vegetables on land with good soil. Much of this land is located in intermediate or warm climates and where there's plenty of water. But not all of the land where we grow food crops has always been so productive. We have changed land with poor soil by enriching it with fertilizer. When this is done properly, we can grow fine vegetable crops or fruit crops on land that once supported very few cultivated plants. Dry land such as this creates a different problem. Here, the soil is rich in minerals, but there's not enough water for growing vegetables or fruits. By building dams and reservoirs to hold the waters of far off mountain rivers and streams, we can channel water across long distances to fill irrigation ditches, which farmers dig in the dry fields. In this way, we change the land, providing all the water needed to grow vegetables and fruit trees. Orange trees are grown in southern lands where the winters are not too cold. We find that other fruit trees, as these apple trees, do better on land where the climate is much cooler. Sometimes we grow our fruit trees on hilly land, where it might be difficult to grow other crops. Some hilly, wet, and cool land has thick, lush grass. Often we choose to use such land as pasture for dairy cattle. Cows have little trouble moving over hilly land but heavy farm machines would have rough going. The flat grasslands of the Western Plains have a drier climate. The kinds of crops which can be grown are limited mainly to grass crops, wheat, barley, sorghum, and so on. These plants are related to the wild grass plants that long ago grew on this land. Here, large machines can be used efficiently for harvesting grains. Land such as this can also be used to produce food without planting any crops at all. Beef cattle feed on the natural grasses which grow in these areas. You can see that we have considerable choice in how we use the land to produce different kinds of food we need. We constantly need clothing, too. For example, in one recent year, Americans used 540 million shirts and blouses, 240 million trousers and skirts, 2 billion pairs of socks, and 620 million pairs of shoes. Raw materials for such clothing also come from the land. We grow cotton as the raw material for some cloth. Cotton is a subtropical plant that grows well on land with rich soil, warm weather, and plenty of moisture. 
the same kind of land on which we might plant vegetables. But we choose to plant thousands of acres of cotton for clothing, both on lands where there's plenty of natural moisture and on those lands which we must irrigate. Often we must decide whether to use land to produce food or clothing. Sometimes we can get both from the same land. The cattle which graze on this land provide both meat and hides. Hides are tanned for shoes and other items of clothing. But with sheep, some breeds are better for wool, which we weave into cloth, while other breeds of sheep are better for meat. Which kind do we wish to raise? We are constantly making decisions about how we're going to use the land for producing food and clothing. Now, what about using the land for things we need to build our shelters? Again, in a recent year, America built almost $46 billion worth of new homes and apartment buildings. More than $5 billion worth of new stores and office buildings and about three and a half billion dollars worth of new factories and shops. Much of this money goes for building materials, all of which come from the land. Tall, straight trees grow in mountainous lands with plenty of rainfall. We cut down such trees for lumber, a building material. Another material used in construction is clay, mined from the land in great quantities. The clay is baked into bricks. Stone is another good building material. We quarry tons of stone from land, sometimes too poor for either crops or animals. This iron ore being taken out of the land is the raw material for one of our strongest building materials, steel. We use steel to build apartment houses, office buildings and factories. Iron and steel are also used to construct machines and machine products, which provide us with many of the conveniences of life, beyond the essentials of food, clothing, and shelter. Many modern products are made of plastics and other synthetic materials, which are chemically processed from coal and other minerals, as petroleum and natural gas. These substances also provide the fuels needed to run our machines. You can see that the land can sometimes be used for different